This is our final video lesson on writing the internal assessment for IB Economics. Before you watch this one, make sure you've completed parts one and two of this series on finding the right article and getting started and writing an outline. All right, you'll notice that I have the outline I created in my last video lesson on the right here, and on the left I'm going to actually write my commentary. At any point, feel free to pause this video if you want to read what I've written. I'll also include a link to the final draft of my commentary in the description on this video. Notice that I start with an introductory paragraph in which I define some key terms. This is not required, but it's certainly not a bad way to start an internal assessment for economics. Define the key terms that you're going to be talking about throughout the rest of your commentary. In this case, I focus on oligopoly, and I outline the characteristics of the U.S. airline market that make it an example of an oligopolistic market. Now that I've provided evidence that the U.S. airline market is in fact oligopolistic, I'm getting into my analysis and evaluation, in fact, of how this affects consumers in the market. I'm pulling in the evidence that the price of fuel has fallen, which makes up 30% of airlines costs. However, this has not caused a decrease in the price of air travel in the United States. So I'm setting myself up from my first graph. And what you're about to see here is how I draw graphs and how my students draw graphs for their internal assessments. Google Drawing has a great set of drawing tools. All you have to do is insert a drawing and within a few minutes you can create the perfect economics graph. Here I'm drawing a kinked demand curve. Notice that I'm drawing it in different sections or segments. I'm paying attention to things like my equilibrium points being dotted lines, not solid lines. And I'm giving the graph a title. I'm looking at the marginal revenues, marginal costs, and demand for Southwest Airlines. That's America's largest carrier. Got my two marginal cost curves showing that the price of fuel has fallen decrease in the marginal cost for Southwest of providing air travel. Showing that the quantity of air travel and the price of air travel has not changed despite the lower fuel prices. Beneath my graph I'm going to get into a detailed explanation of what that graph shows. All graphs in your commentaries must be explained fully. Why is this graph showing a kinked demand curve? What does the kinked demand curve represent? How does this demonstrate the interdependence of firms in an oligopolistic market? Any models you include in your commentaries must be clearly explained, the theory behind them, and how it relates to the article. In this case, the kink demand curve somewhat explains why prices for air travel are not falling even as the marginal cost of providing air travel decreases in the United States due to lower fuel prices. So who suffers from this? Consumers. And who benefits? Airlines. 14% profits thanks to lower fuel prices compared to half that in Europe and Asia. This allows me to compare the European and the US air travel markets later on, which is an essential part of my evaluation. All right, so what's the explanation for the high entry barriers and for the oligopoly power of US airlines? I'm bringing that evidence in now. The rule banning more than 25% foreign ownership of an American air travel company and the shortage of spots at American airports, which limits the expansion of new airlines into markets, limiting consumers' choice and leading to higher prices. How does this compare to Europe? In Europe, we see lots of new firms entering the air travel market, such as Norwegian Air Shuttle and Wizz Air of Hungary. This is evidence that there are lower entry barriers in Europe, that the market is not oligopolistic, rather it is monopolistically competitive. So in this graph, I'm going to show the demand, marginal revenue, and marginal cost for a single European air travel company. Air France and show how when marginal costs and average costs fall due to lower fuel prices, the price that consumers pay falls and the quantity of air travel offered increases. This is unique from the US air travel market. The lower entry barriers allow new firms to enter the market when profits are being earned. In this case, lower fuel prices lead to lower prices for consumers and more economic profits. Notice that I include on the graph the area of economic profit. The article implies that, a, that European carriers are earning half the profits of American carriers, which were 14%, so European carriers are earning 7% profits. These profits, as I'm going to explain, should attract more competition to the European air travel market, and in the end, consumers are the beneficiaries of this. Lower prices, greater quantity. This is the whole point of my evaluation in this commentary, in fact. 
And now beneath the graph, I'm going to explain what I've drawn in great detail. Why are there no economic profits being earned at the beginning? This is because this is a monopolistically competitive market with low entry barriers. The profits that we see in this graph should be eliminated in the long run as new firms enter the market. And of course, the outcome for consumers is lower prices and greater product variety and probably quality. Time to wrap my commentary up now. I'm going to do some evaluation once again. Due to the lack of competition in the U.S. air travel market, of course, this was my main idea of this whole commentary, consumers suffer. Firms benefit, of course, through higher profits, but the U.S. government must take a position on this matter. It must decide who it's going to stand up for, consumers who are paying high prices, or does it want to continue to protect the monopoly power of U.S. airlines? This is an effective evaluation, a good way to end my commentary. I'm expressing my judgment on this matter, and I'm coming to a clear conclusion. So I've just finished writing my first draft. In a minute, I'm going to do a word count. I suggest you pause now and just read over this evaluation. Of course, I'll provide the link to the full commentary in the description of this video. But you've seen the process now from start to finish, from finding the article to reading that article to commenting on it, writing an outline, and then writing an entire first draft. So the last thing I want to do is do a quick word count. See if this is within the word limit of an economics IA. And in fact, this first draft is not. It's a little bit over the limit by 15 words, but that's all right. I wrote it quickly. Time to turn it into my teacher, get some feedback, and work on that final draft. Get it down by 15 words and turn it into my teacher. Of course, before you turn in a final draft, guys, you want to make sure your cover sheet is completely done. If you're not sure what goes on the cover sheet, this is in the IB documentation. You could also scroll, scroll up to the top and check that out at the beginning of this video. Hope you enjoyed my lessons. I hope you find these useful and good luck on your own internal assessments, guys. Here we go.